I'm going to show you some examples, some very, very common examples about this. Let's search, for example, preposition, place it. This is going to be a very interesting one. It says here, placement problems and dangling prepositions. This is a, a website that comes from an English teacher and it's really, really good. I have been reading these articles recently and they have been pretty interesting. I have learned one thing or two. So let's read this information. Help me, Sophie. What information do you have here? Yeah, mis misplaced prepositional phrases. Mm -hmm. Putting the prepositional phrase in the wrong place can lead to some strange sounding sentences. Tourists often wander, wander yeah, mm -hmm. along our beach with cameras. Do the beaches have cameras? <laughs> mm -hmm. Tourists with cameras often wander along our beach. No, the tourists have cameras. Mm -hmm. It is always best to put prepositional phrases with the word they modify. Just, just examples, just examples. Okay. Uh -huh. Again, so, examples? No, just examples, just examples. So we are talking about the positioning of the of the connector with is connecting directly the first the first thing that will that will possess the thing in this case we're talking about possession no this happens also in spanish this specific problem happens in spanish too so if you don't collocate these prepositions in spanish uh, in this in the position that should be put well in english is going to be the same right this problem i have heard you speaking and i i don't think you have this issue you don't really have this this problem fortunately what really happens is that for example in in the conversations that you have had in the class i have seen that you collocate the subject in the wrong position and therefore the connector will change the position too. What do you mean? What do you mean with that? If I say uh, in, in, in Spanish, I think me gustan mucho las me gusta mucho la no how do you say that? A very common example. For example, I read I want to I want to think of an example because uh, every time we are thinking in, in I, I'm gonna start making notes about what when you speak. But when we say Les gustan. Ah, okay. Le gusta mucho a mi mamá eh, ir de compras. Le gusta mucho a mi mamá ir de compras. Right? This is a sentence that we can understand. Do you agree? Yes. How do you say that in English? <laughs> My mother really likes going to the mall. And what happened to the position of my mother? Mm. Well, how? I don't know. <laughs> because you, you, if you analyze the position of words, you put the, the, the word mother in a different position in Spanish than in English. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know this? Yes, yes, yes. In English, where was where was the, the position of mother? At first. At first. And in Spanish, what was the position of mama? ¿Cómo era? Uh, uh, le gusta mucho a mi mamá. Mm. Yes. Uh, It's after. At the end, yes. It's after, you see? Mm -hmm. So something that we need to mentalize, guys, is the position of words. Because if you think in Spanish, we are going to commit mistakes like, she likes my mother to go to the to, to, uh, to shopping. She likes my mother to go to shopping and that becomes a very, very common mistake that we commit in upper intermediate. We are speaking so fast that we are not considering the position of words. And automatically, the position of the connector is affected as well. Chucho. By the way, my translation was correct. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, it's a, it was a, a simple sentence. It, even though it's a simple sentence, people always switch this these two words when they speak. This has happened to you guys. Yes. I think that the problem is the word se and le. Exactly. No, le. Totally. So you are very strange. <laughs> it translates. Exactly. Spanish is super, super, uh, it's very vague. It's, it's a bigger language than in English. So English is at the reduction of our complex complexity, right? Yes. We are thinking in a very complex manner and it becomes a challenge to make it simple for English. That's the issue. So every time you're thinking about the word se and le or, or conjugation such as um, uh, está atrapada, you know, está perdida, you know. We are talking in feminine, but in English we forget to collocate she. So it's, some translations are very, very, very important. And in this moment, talking about position, you need to understand the position of the words that you, that you use. Slow down, guys. Slow down to analyze the way you speak. Any questions? All right. All right. Then let's continue. Continue with the with the rest, Sophie. Yes. Um. It is always best to put prepositional phrases with the words they modify, unless you are con consciously moving an adverb phrase. Make sure you don't put a prepositional phrase after a noun that it doesn't modify. Exactly. And at the same time, I would add over here, make sure also to put the noun in the correct position. Because if you don't put the noun in the correct position, the connector is going to be in a different position too. So everything, everything goes with the noun. Remember the standard structure. If you have a verb, where does the subject go? Before. Before. Always, 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 never after. If you put the, ad, the, the, the noun after the verb, you are using an object and that's a different, a different grammatical application. Mm -hmm. The doer of the action always goes before the, the, the action. Always, always, always. Okay, note number one, doer of the action should always possible but with a form to see form okay for example for example uh some those uh it's impossible to tell the sound to leave this like 
to tell the son. So the first is the verb, to tell, and then the verb, the subject, the son. No, the subject is it. It's impossible to tell. Awesome. Yes. Uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> yes. You were thinking about the sun as a, as a subject, but the, the sun is receiving. Yes. Yes, and yes. That's it, right? Uh -huh, the subject is it. The door of the action should always go before the verb. And by consequence, One. The connector goes corresponding goes in its corresponding place. Uh -huh. The example was my mom likes my mom uh, my mom with her with her friends like to go shopping my mom like to go shopping with her friends. You know, it likes my mom to go shopping with her friends. Here you have three different examples, only the last one is right. Okay, consider the position of the subject because the, the, the preposition will be affected by it. Okay, okay. Let's go with the next one. Dangling prepositions. To dangle is to go, to dangle is to fly and to, to move away, to move in different positions without a fixed and a specific one. For example, when you have a, a, let's say you break, imagine I break my my cup and the the holder falls down. Okay. Then my holder is going to be dangling all over the house because I will procrastinate on putting it again with cola loca. Okay. Yeah. Right? That's to dangle. So, what are dangling propositions? Help me, Luis. Yes. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for a while, but. <laughs> Maybe for a while. <laughs> <laughs> when come you can do this. Dangling <laughs> uh, proposition. Never in a sentence with a proposition. We have almost all heard that rule, but it's not, but it's not as, is it card or okay? Card. Card, card is uh, the action of, of writing on, on a rock. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. In, in a stone, as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Do I continue? Yes, please. Sometimes a proposition at the end of the sentence is really a problem. Sometimes it is not. If it is, there are several ways to fix it. Uh, it is fine. Just leave it. Only your English teacher has a big problem with a proposition at the end of the sentence, which mm -hmm. case try to complete completely rearranging the sentence. Watch out. In this case, this specific text is from American English teachers to American English students. Eh? This rule of never end a sentence with a preposition, this is something that English teachers tell to English 
speaking students because uh -huh. for an English teacher in, in that speaks English is is informal to use the preposition yesterday we spoke about it uh -huh. yes 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 so this specific rule doesn't apply for you because you are speakers of English as a second language from the perspective of Spanish. Okay. And in the perspective of Spanish, it's necessary to copy or mimic the way American people do. Like we studied yesterday. What are you looking at? Not at what are you looking? Yes, this is just right. Thinking in Spanish, which of the two are more more similar to, to our language? The second one. <clears throat> What? The first one. This the, the, the first one is similar to Spanish? Or the second yeah. one? Second one. Why the first one and why the second one? Let's start with Sophie. Because you started with, with what in Spanish too? You, you say que estás viendo, que estás mirando. You don't say oh. at, uh, And you you put at at the end because I don't know in English the the verb is uh, with your look and a specific thing is look at so oh okay this was a bad example this was a bad example no 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 no, no. let's talk about uh, another example yes Chucho. For me, the second one is the translation for example, ah. when you want to ask someone, ¿A quién estás viendo? You know? ¿A quién? Pero ya sería who. It's a different question. Uh, uh -huh. but, but that is my point. This is my point. You have a... This is exactly my point. Because if you say, for example, what are you crying for? For what are you crying? Exactly. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. ¿Por quién estás llorando? No, por qué? No, por quién? You say for. Yes, for, por qué? No, por quién? Ah, bueno, ajá. Yeah, sí, no. sí, sí, sí. Ajá. Ajá. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So, what are you crying for? For what are you crying? That was my point of view. Probably the, 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 the other is bad because in Spanish it doesn't match. But this one, yes. Or this one, who are you going with? With who are you going? You see? So it's not a matter, it's not a matter of the connector at, no, 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 no. It's a matter of all the different prepositions that are used with the specific verb at uh, is not that you are going you are not looking at a specific person no 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 it's a collocation it's a chunk a cookie look at therefore the position of at is necessary at the end of the sentence because that's the way american people speak you know if you observe the examples that we have here in the website, these American persons say that it sounds awkward. No one speaks like that. No one speaks like that, not even English teachers, you know? So the preposition at the end is very common. Very, very common. Remember, this is an American website for American speakers. You see? Yes. yes, yes. That is so interesting. Is 
Yes, it's English, but it's different English in a different perspective. So exactly. keep going. Yes, Chucha. Um. What? Hmm. <laughs> That's all. So continue, Luis. Continue reading what we have here. Uh, with the with the example, right? No. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are these cookies made of? What again? Ah, uh, okay. Hey. Yes. Uh, what are these cookies made of? Okay, you could leave. You could leave it like this. Uh, what are the ingredients in these cookies? Better. Uh, okay. A teacher is a person most children look up to. Okay, you could leave it like this. A teacher is a person to whom most children look up. A big awkward. This might impress your teacher, but people don't talk like this. Correct. That is totally correct. If you write this in an exam, I will be like, wow. But nobody talks like that. <laughs> so, honestly, that's extra information. And the last one, Luis. Uh, most children look up to a teacher, completely rewritten. That's it. So let's analyze these examples. In the first, the one of the cookies, the first sentence and the second sentence mean the same. Right? What is the phrasal verb? Is it a phrasal verb? Let me check. No, I don't think so. I think it's a collocation. Mm -hmm. It's a collocation. Passive voice. What's your, sh what's your shirt made of? You see? What's the meaning of this? Can you say this sentence in a different in different words? We made us up of something. Mm, but I want you to make the same question, but in different words, like the cookies. Well, the case to play, yeah? I, the different words in English. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Give me Both an opportunity. <laughs> no. No, no, no. You have 10 minutes, 15 minutes to wake up. <laughs> For example, a very uh, this, this question can cause well, cringe because it's too long, but oh, what materials Exactly. of your shirt have exactly uh-huh what materials were used or what what materials does your shirt have which is a very awkward question no yes yes it's more much much better to use the preposition of of the collocation that corresponds to the verb in this case the mm -hmm. collocation is Oh, that's right. Ah. Of. Let's write this information. This information is very, very important. What materials were used in the manufacturing, in the creation of your your shirt. Ah, well, even in Spanish, never, uh, nobody <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> speaks like that. We never speak like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so interesting to see how concise can be. But of course, if we are thinking in, this, in, in Spanish, it's very probable that we are going to say, of what is your shirt? 
Ay. No, and that also sounds super awkward. We are all even omitting the verb me. So let's say of what is your shirt? And now we can have this example. So talking about the the cookies, what are the ingredients in these cookies? Probably this is common. Probably. Don't you think? I don't know. I think even the, the second one sounds strange. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that we are going to hear a lot of people uh, speaking like that. I agree with you. Uh, uh, how? The second. Where are the ingredients in the cookies? Mm. You know, if you're eating a cookie and you're like, hmm, this is very nice. What are they made of? Mm -hmm. Like no. mm -hmm. That's the one. So these two examples are about collocations. Okay. The second example, the one of the a teacher is a person most children look up to. This one is not about collocation. What do I mean? In this case, we need to analyze what is look up to. Mm. Right? To look up to somebody is a phrasal verb. Who remembers this before I search it? Uh. It's similar to say that you admire, mm. admire. I'm very good, Sophie. Yes, of course. Uh -huh. When you admire and respect somebody, you look up to that person. Good job. Sophie knows the prohibited verbs. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The prohibited, the forbidden, forbidden verbs. Forbidden, yes. Uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. Good job. And as you can see, the phrasal verb is all together. The connector to is not an independent connector. You see, it's all together. Yeah, because look up only means uh, search, search, search. Precisely. Only look up is search. And look up to somebody is respect somebody. Oh, yeah. You see, that specific phrasal verb is super useful and super effective for this specific example. Because if you are giving an example like that, right, a teacher is a person most children look up to. Sometimes we collocate an additional object at the end because for us, Spanish thinkers, we need an object. Look up to who? You know? But that is actually incorrect in English. In English, it's not necessary to say that. Why? Look up to, we are talking about the, the teacher in this case. And yes. substitute. A teacher is a person most children admire. For the verb admire, it was not necessary to say a secondary object. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So with phrasal verbs, we need to pay attention on how we are using these words. Let me take a note on that.
teacher is a person most children admire. That's it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. The other form, and this is interesting, most children look up to a teacher, which is another form to say the same sentence. But I want you to observe what happened to the word a teacher. In this particular case, what part of the sentence is it working or what, what function is it doing? Is it the doer of the action or is it the receiver of the action? The receiver. It's a receiver, you see? Therefore, if you analyze in the first sentence, we are technically speaking about the receiver of the admiration. As a teacher is a person most children look up to, right? Most children look up to a teacher. After a transitive verb like look up to, we always need to use an object. Except this is an advanced rule. Except when you are mentioning the object before. I repeat, a transitive verb we always need an object, except when the object is mentioned as a subject in a relative clause sentence. What is a relative clause sentence? A relative clause sentence is a sentence that has connectors. Who, which, that, etc. A teacher is a person most children look up to. Where do you collocate the who? This specific sentence. At the begin, beginning. Who a teacher? Who a teacher is a person? No, no, who, who substitutes a teacher? Who is a person most children look up to? Does that make sense? No, a teacher is a person who most children look up to. Exactly. Look at this. A teacher is a person who most children look up to. Technically, this who is implicit. Teacher. I don't want to go to that school. You don't want to what? Go to that school. <laughs> you don't want to go to school? Don't go to school. Uh, put a, a, um, a orange juice uh, stand in front of Metro Squawk and you can get profits. <laughs> <laughs> the idea. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Put a put a taco stand and finish. No school. No problem. You know? Idea. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> See you. you. On, on the... My brother. Have a nice day. Bye. Be happy. I think you need more examples with this. Don't you think? Go, <coughs> Sophie. Yes, we're going to say the same thing. Where, where did, did you write who? 
because it's uh, this particular sentence has a who implicit, an implicit who. Aha, uh -huh. it says so that's the reason you write, but you did you don't say the sentence with who because it's like a repetitive. I don't. I think if it's you see the teacher, it's a no. No, it's not repetitive. Actually, that's a complete form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can see also a teacher is a person that most children look up to. Mm -hmm. That's the most common for you. Is it me? Uh, yeah. If we, okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the, the, the one that is more common is that, but you can also, technically that is a substitution for who. Who is the one that is the, the, the natural one. Both can be omitted. Mm -hmm. Luis, what were you saying? Uh, in, the, in the previous example about uh, children's and the teacher, Mm -hmm. uh, when we modify the sentence uh, putting the uh, children or teacher at the beginning of the sentence mm -hmm. when we put uh, oh, how could I say it uh, we put children at the beginning if we need to emphasize the children at the center of, of our uh, message. And if we put mm. a teacher at the beginning, we are emphasizing teacher. Of course, definitely. Uh -huh. Yes, because of course, both are correct. But now talking about context, it depends, no? It depends on what you are talking about. If you're talking about the teacher or you're talking about the children. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. okay. Yes, of course. The three... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, even when both communicate the, the same message, mm -hmm. uh, the intention the intention changes, right? Of course, totally right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we are talking about the same teacher. There was no difference here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, teacher. What an important thing. Yeah. Of course, all these all these examples that we are using are contextless. There is no. There's no context uh, in these examples, but when you connect them with context, this is when it gets interesting. Because now you decide which one to use. Got it? Yeah, if you are in the middle of a text about uh, education, teachers, mm -hmm. the school, something like this. Mm -hmm. Of course. Putting teacher at the beginning is a, your best option. Exactly, uh -huh. definitely. And who is talking? Who, who is the audience? Is the is the teacher an audience? Is the, is the parents of the children an audience? Like who is listening to you? That is also important. Yes, yes, it is. Of course. Right. Totally correct. What an important lesson. Because we're learning to translate the way uh, American people speak. No? Now this one, for example, this one is another phrasal breath. Pick up. Can you read this example, Sophie? What time shall I pick pick you up? Okay, because pick up is an idiomatic or to work work there. <laughs> What happened in this case with the proposition? Again, teacher? In this case, what happened with the proposition? It, it, it is also at, at the end. It is also at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Mm. But it 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 it, it is because. Mm. Not because it, it's the same that the the previous example. For example, look at um look up to because it is uh, it's the way of the phrasal verb. Okay, but the the um, word the preposition connects a noun. What is the noun we are connecting here? Because it's just it's a position in relation to a word. Mm -hmm. um, time? What do you mean time? Yeah, time, time is a noun. What time? Ah, okay. And you are connecting time with up? I think we are lost in this one. Mm -hmm. In the first examples, no. <laughs> the connector yeah. of yes was directly connected with with the question what of of what, but in this case this is not connected with the question. This is connected with the word pick, which is a transitive verb. Pick up. You are going to pick up a person. Again, transitive verbs. So. Technically, the first, the first examples on top, we were talking about collocations. But the second examples, starting with the one of the teacher, we are talking about transitive verbs. Let's talk about them. Transitive verbs need an object. Do you agree? Yeah. And this object is expressed with let me like this. This object is expressed in any point of the sentence. For example, in this case, it was a teacher. In this particular case, which one is the object? You exactly the connector, the word that we are connecting, and the word that is related to the connector is the word you, not the question what. In this case, we are talking, uh, we are not talking about collocations, we are talking about phrasal verbs. You see, so then we collocate in a question the phrasal verb at the end. You need to separate these two concepts. In the first one, it was the connector at was because we are talking about connectors that we need, yes or yes. And in the second is because the phrase of the is together. These two words are together. Pick up. If you don't understand, ask questions because I see you a little bit lost. Yeah, but now I I I understand that. Sure. It's because I I I used to feel thinking about collocations with the the phrase that, but yeah, with ah. transitive verbs I I understand. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. You were you were thinking in the first in the first example. We need to discriminate these two so we can understand the different usages of the preposition because yes, it's a connectors, but in different terms, you know, in different applications. That's the one. Confusing, I know. But it's not impossible. The next one is the phrase, the full phrase. Luis, with this one. Uh, what time should we go back? Nope. At what time should we... Wake up, much better. Why do you think it's much better this one? Uh, uh, for our Spanish perspective or for English perspective? For both. 
Uh, okay, I think that the first one is better for Sophie and me, and the second one is better for <laughs> English students. Really? Even though the connector at is at the end? I think, I think the first one is more difficult. Because oh. if we think in Spanish, oh, you know, my students usually forget to say at. Oh. Ah, but okay, but what is our best option or what is easier to build up? Ah, okay, both. What do you <laughs> say? Okay, I think we should learn the first one. Ah, okay, that's okay. our objective. Mm -hmm. But I'm not completely sure the first one is. Uh, we will be able to build correctly. Yeah. And let's say I suggest to take the word when you ask for the time, take it as an exception. You know? Because of course all the propositions go at the end when you are talking about collocations except when you are asking about the time when you ask about the time you always use at what time that that can be eh? that can be a an observation well if we use the second one for asking the time uh, do american people uh, no. Will American people uh, see you as a kind of book or something like that? With which one? Using the second one. The second one? No, no, no. The second one is much better. This website is precisely the um, for American people. Okay, so we won't be a kind of a strange book. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you are not going to be that. Okay. Never, never. Even though, even though you you are talking in English, you're not a strange bug, man. <laughs> it's just it's just a, a thing. But but th that's the thing. Uh, we are not learning to avoid being bugs. We are learning to learn to talk like them, so we can understand when they are talking. That's the objective. <laughs> not to be not to be <laughs> aliens. Me. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay, good job. So let's say that asking about the time is the the exception of the rule. This was about collocations. Next pronunciation Sophie. Rearrange. Mm -hmm. Rearrange the prepositional phrase. Color pencils are my are my favorite tools to draw with. <laughs> Not terrible. Uh, color color pencils are my favorite tools with which to draw. It's with preferable. Draw. Both. This, the second is preferable, but it's more it's more difficult, no? Yes, because if if we think in a uh, in the collocations and the previous examples, I, I would think that the the better one is the first. Mm -hmm. But no. <laughs> but probably because you didn't know the second one with which to draw, we never use that. Don't you think? I mean, the first one. With which? Yeah. No. The first one says not terrible. That doesn't mean that it's bad. The first one is really nice. You can you can use it. Okay. You see? It's acceptable. Acceptable. The one that is preferable okay. is interesting because we are using again a relative clause. Color pens are my favorite tools with which to draw. 
these relative clauses, connectors, which, who, that, eh, etc. The reason we are using this like this is because probably that's going to be our next lesson, is how advanced speakers use connectors which, connectors what, connectors that, you know? In order to understand why the second is preferable. But that's a matter of the next topic. Uh -huh. The first one is acceptable. And super important for uh, for a Spanish uh, perspective, don't forget the with. Because if you read the sentence without the with, it makes sense in the Spanish. Read. Color pencils are my favorite tools to draw. That's it. Right? And we will never, from a Spanish perspective, we are never going to remember to collocate a second thing. But a surprise, we are talking about a collocation. So collo memorizing collocations is fundamental for you guys. Take a note on that. Don't forget to use the collocation, the corresponding collocation. Let's write these examples. What time should we wake up? That's another common. Super common mistake. Eliminate that. In this case, color pencils are my favorite tools to draw. That's incomplete. The last one, sometimes people add unnecessary prepositions to the end of the sentence, usually when you are talking about the connector at. This specific analysis is, okay, teacher, you are telling me to collocate the preposition and sometimes you're telling me to not collocate the preposition, so when should I connect the preposition? All of these need to be observed by you. When you are watching a movie, when you are listening to a podcast, pay attention on the questions. Don't, don't analyze the podcast in Spanish because you are not observing, when you are thinking in Spanish, you are not observing how they are using words. You know? Your mission as an advanced speaker is to see and observe the position of words so you can duplicate them. Mm -hmm. And if you can duplicate them, you will be able to communicate and understand correctly. So when to use it, it depends on every verb. It's like memorizing regular and irregular verbs. How, do you, how did you memorize regular and irregular verbs? Poof. By... Crying always. Exactly, you know, by failure, constant failure and listening to examples that was the only way in this case is the same it's observation okay i gave you some examples and now it's your mission to find even more so when you are this weekend when you watch a movie and when you are checking different things uh, check examples write some examples we can discuss them in class Right? So that was it. That was the article I wanted you to read today. The tips that I 
have for you are written in this slide. Let me just position it so you can read it. Yes, here it is. Transitive phrasal verbs, collocations, and there we go. Okay, any question? No, by my side. Cool. So we finished for today. It was a very, very interesting class. Good analysis, guys. Check your video this weekend because we're going to have a conversation on Monday. Okay? Have a nice day. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Bye.